Hey everyone, Sumo Spiffy here. Nagoya 2024 is a week away, which means it's tier list time once again. Let's see if we can peel apart the layers of this mediocrity onion. Note to self, find a more positive metaphor next time. Terra no Fuji, S, Injury Tier. Given how May went, and how unhappy the Yokozuna Council was with the fact Teru tried to fight only to drop out after one match, it seems a lot more likely he sits out July. If he does enter, I think he'll feel compelled to stay in for longer, but he'll still drop if he's struggling. It would take a medical miracle for him to fight up to his capability in Nagoya. Expect nothing and you won't be disappointed. Kotozakura and Hoshoryu, A tier. These two have been linked and will stay linked until one of them does something, for better or worse, to break the connection. They're both very solid Ozeki who can consistently win double-digit matches each Basho, but who brain dump one or two fights every tournament and cost themselves chances at the championships they need for a Yokozuna run. Once again, I slightly favor Koto because there are fewer guys who give him trouble, but in any given Basho, Hoshoryu could end up with more wins. If Nephew is your guy, that's fine. Takakesho, B, Injury Tier. As always, there was a time when a healthy hamster was a happy hamster, but even the best case scenario doesn't put him on the level with Nephew and Koto anymore. If you pick Keisho for a game instead of the other Ozeki, you're doing it as a fan, not because he's a competitive choice. Abi, C+, but it's a complicated C+. Let's dig in a little bit because Abi's had two straight strong tournaments in the Sanyaku when he previously tended to struggle at this level. More to the point, after struggling to a 1-6 start in January after the death of his stable master, Shikoroyama, Abi's run off a 26-12 record. That's awfully good, and at this level, just feeling it can let you move a little faster and get a couple more wins. His 9-6 in March wasn't a mirage either. His 5-0 start was against opponents not fighting to their level except Wakamoto Haru, but for whatever reason he absolutely dominates Waka. But none of his losses were unexpected except maybe Mitakeyumi. Kotozakura, Hoshoryu, Tekiru Fuji, Asanoyama, and Ono Sato are all better than Abi and should beat him most of the time. So, he didn't get 9 wins through a string of upsets, he showed up and did what he needed to do. May's a little harder to judge. The Sanyaku collapsed around him, but he'd probably have beaten Teru, Keisho, and Kiri in their broken states. However, those matches were replaced with more Maegashira opponents, which meant Oho, Ura, and Onosho, who he went 2-1 against. He also had contender matchups with Shonen Umi and Meisei, who simply are not on his level right now. Asano Yama not being healthy did help, but he still had to face Hoshoryu, Kotozakura, and Ono Sato, and he beat both Ozeki. He had two Fusen wins against tough opponents in Takayasu and Wakamoto Haru, which also helped. I mean, Waka's gotta beat him eventually, right? He probably should have done even better, but the inexplicable loss to Oho on Day 9 left him on the outside of the Yusho race by the end. So. A lot of what we should expect depends on his opponents. Who's he likely to see? Koto Zakura and Ono Sato should beat him. He's at best 50-50 against Nephew. Daisha was always tough, and Hirad Umi's become a problem lately. Kirishima probably isn't all that healthy yet, and Abi does reasonably well against Takakesho, so that's a couple good chances it wins, but assuming Teru doesn't fight long enough to see him, 3 and 4 would be a decent record against the Sanyaku. 4 and 3 would be good. The Maegashira matches are what should carry the Basho for him. He should absolutely beat Meisei and Mitakeyumi. Atami Fuji depends on the day. Like I said, Wakamoto Haru seems like he should eventually figure Abi out, but he hasn't yet. Takiyasu's tough if he's feeling good, but that's always a question mark. Abi's never lost to Gonoyama, so this is setting up pretty nicely for him. You have to look at his schedule and think he's odds on to get another winning record. The only thing is, if he takes one or two bad losses, he might still have a decent record going into the second half and then get put against contenders again. And this time, that's most likely to be Wakataka Kage and Asano Yama. Abi at 100% should finish with 8 wins minimum, given his probable schedule. But 100% Abi means not just being physically healthy, but mentally in flow and not giving his opponents a chance to win even though they know it's coming. He rides a very thin line between success and failure, and if he falls off just a little, he might only get 6 wins. But I'm leaning positively towards him for now. Ono Sato, S tier. If he doesn't slip, and there's no reason to think he will, the only guys who we can expect to keep up with his win total are Koto, Nephew, Asanoyama, and Wakataka Kage. The only other guys who I can even imagine doing it are Wakamoto Haru, Daisho, and Takayasu, but Ono Sato should fight all three, and thus it becomes that much less likely any of them do keep up. In bracket games, 
He's clearly a better option than any Sekiwake or Komosubi, and obviously you want him on your side in any other game as well. Kirishima, B, Injury Tier. His injuries are significant, and even though I'm sure he's recovered to some extent, there's no way to know what that extent is. Maybe he'll feel amazing and have an absolute pop-off Basho, but it looks much more like he's grinding through injuries that are going to dunk him down the ranks a bit until he hopefully recovers and makes his way back up. There's a reason I didn't include him on the list of guys who can keep up with Ono Sato. He absolutely can do it when he's healthy, but that's how far away from healthy he seems to be. Daesho, B tier. He's obviously more than good enough to crack heads at Maegashira, but as a Komusubi, he's going to have a tougher schedule across the board than he did at Maegashira 1. There's not going to be a Day 15 Koto Shoho match this time. When he's on point for 15 days, like he was in May and definitely was not in March, he's a cut above just about everyone outside the Sanyaku. Even if he struggles against the guys above him, there are plenty of opponents below him who can carry him to a winning record. Here to Umi, C+. I waffled on this for a while between C plus and C minus. I have to acknowledge his improvement and the fact his head to heads no longer do much to predict his future performance. On the other hand, I don't think there's a chance in hell he catches Ono Sato off guard again, and like Daesho, at Komusubi his schedule is a lot less likely to pick up a softer opponent at the end. I'm leaning plus because his schedule should be quite similar to May, and the biggest probable hurdles are if Takakesho and Kirishima are healthy, or if he's barely hanging on to a winning record, but then gets stuck against Asanoyama and Wakataka Kage. That can absolutely happen, but he'd have to get somewhat unlucky, and I'm not going to pick luck over what's probable. Meisei and Mitakeyumi, D tier. I'm pulling Mitakeyumi up here because the analysis is the same for both. They're solid veterans who fight hard, but their bodies can't hold up for 15 days against the highest level competition anymore. Between the two of them, Meisei's the only one who's managed a winning record in 2023 or 2024 at rank 4 or above, and that was with a 4-7 start leading to a bunch of relative softballs getting thrown his way for the last 4 days. If I had to favor one, I guess I'd call Meisei a D-plus to Mitakeyumi's D, but it's hard to see 8 wins in the cards for either of them. Atami Fuji, C-. Atami's been spinning his wheels at the top of the Maegashira list for the last few tournaments, so the fairest assessment is that he's pretty close to 50-50 to get a winning record. The reason I lean away from it is simply that he has to run the full Sanyaku gauntlet early, and they should more or less pile drive his ass. It's worse for him because he'll probably fight Takakesho around day 4, and Keisho's likely to get more done early when he doesn't have a bunch of matches weighing on his injuries. But he's capable of picking up a surprise win or two, so 8 wins is hardly out of reach. Wakamoto Haru, B, Injury Tier. I'm putting him in Injury Tier because he got hurt last tournament, and even though he came back, he clearly was not 100%. There's a good chance he's at full health or close to it for July, so don't let this dissuade you from picking him too much. This is more an acknowledgement that, one, we should clearly expect a winning record from him at this level, and two, it's possible the toe injury lingers and does impact his performance. Takiyasu, A, Injury Tier. Some things never change. If Papa Bear can stay healthy, he should generally get 10 wins even at this rank, but his back problems seem to flare up more often than not these days once he's ranked 3 and above, so I would be very cautious about picking him for anything until you're out of reasonable options and a risky Takayasu is still better than who's left. If you're a Kachi Clash player, for example, Takayasu may be capable of more wins than Wakamoto Haru, but are you willing to bank on him staying in one piece? Gonoyama, C-. He's consistently struggled in the Joy, the top 16 wrestlers, but he's too good to simply dump into D tier. He's also working on being able to do more than charge and smash, which is good because it's too predictable and at this level, too many guys have been able to take advantage. But even though part of making these predictions is figuring out when a guy will make a leap forward, at this point I need to see some level of effectiveness from him using other tactics or him finding a way to pound more people into submission even if they see it coming before I can reasonably show faith in him to win at this level. Tobizaru, C-. This feels bad because watching him, he doesn't look like he's lost a step or anything, but this is a tier list based on expected results and the short drop to 4 East didn't do him any favors. He might start off well, since he's that one step back and shouldn't catch hands from anyone in the Sanyaku right away, but he'll get pulled into those matches quickly enough that it's easy to see the losses piling up. His final record may depend quite a bit on whether he has more matches against Maegashira higher than him or lower than him. I expect he'll do reasonably well fighting down in rank, but I don't know how many of those fights he'll get. Ura, C-. 
This also feels bad because at 4 west, he'll avoid the Sanyaku for longer. Problem is, if he starts well, he's more likely to get those Sanyaku matchups, and we saw what happened after that 6-0 start in May. If he doesn't start as well, he may get fewer Sanyaku matchups, but at that point, he's already also picked up early losses. If the whole Sanyaku stayed in for the whole Basho, that would be a massive benefit for Ura. Since that's extremely unlikely, another 7-8 looks like a good guess for Pinky. Onosho, C, Injury Tier. If I wasn't using Injury Tiers, I'd put Onosho at C+. He's not better than Ura at this point, but that's the difference between being on the edge of the joy and staring down at least a few Sanyaku matchups, and being only that one step back, but a lot more likely to avoid them. Onosho's most likely going to have an easier schedule than Ura, so if his knees hold up, he should be able to do pretty well. After all, he went 7-8 in May, but that included losses to Koto, Hoshoryu, and Abi. Unless he gets off to a really hot start, he may not see any of them this time. Shona no Umi C+. Shona no Umi has never had a winning record at a single-digit Maegashira rank, and I don't think he's going to blow the doors off this Basho or anything. But when he scored his two 7 and 8s and Maegashira 5 and 6, he was still a big guy who leaned heavily on his defensive prowess. Over the last couple of Bashos, we've seen more of a willingness to attack and put that big body to better use. He's been starting red hot, going 7 and 2 in March and 9 and 2 in May before the competition stiffened up and he stumbled towards the end. If there's a major critique to level at him, it's that as he fell away from the top of the leaderboard, he seemed to lose some of his drive. At least, that's how it looked in March. It's hard to fault him for losing to Abi, Koto, and Ono Sato from days 12 to 14 in May. But even if he coasted a bit, it looked much more like he didn't want to risk an injury with a winning record secured and no title to fight for. He's not likely to have the same type of opening week this time, but he should be more capable of scoring 8 wins from this spot just outside the Sanyaku's attention than he has been in the past. If half the Sanyaku leaves to injury again, maybe that changes, but it can't happen twice. And it? Takano Sho, C- and a low C- at that. The only reason he's not D tier is that he's essentially surrounded by a lot of guys coming up from lower ranks, and he should have few opponents from that more elite group further up. I can see the schedule swinging in such a way that he gets the matches he needs for another 8 and 7, but that's a narrower path than the one that leads to losing records. Plus, while his bad knee generally doesn't seem to give him acute issues anymore, there's always the possibility he has more problems with it than usual. There are better picks around it. Oho, C+. This isn't that high of a grade, but even so, it feels like I'm taking a flyer on the kid. He spent the last two Bashos facing the best of the best and managing to squeak out not terrible records. However, a big part of that has been how his schedule lined up at the end of each Basho. He had 8 losses by day 12 each time, which means he then fought others who were struggling as well. But in May, that meant Tamawashi, Wakamoto Haru, and Midori Fuji, which isn't exactly an easy road, even with Waka being hurt and Midori not looking like himself. He's also been putting forth a much more consistent level of effort as opposed to 2023 and before, where he looked like he sank into a mental hole when the going got tough. Effort is the one thing that can always be there, and I'm taking a bit of a chance that he's learned how to keep grinding even if he has a tough start at this middle rank. He should be more likely than not to reach 8 wins. Kota Shoho, Ryuden, Kinbozan, and Oshoma, C+. These guys are a blob of marginally above average top division wrestlers sitting together at the middle ranks. A fully functional Ryuden probably has the best odds of a winning record, whereas I'd rate Oshoma as the one actually most likely to do it, but I think they're all better than 50-50 for one reason. Anyone who struggles within the group will have more winnable fights outside of it. All of them should do pretty well if they get matchups further down the Banzuke, which can happen later in the Basho based on records. I won't be the least bit surprised if all of them go either 8 and 7 or 7 and 8, but I'd guess 8 or 9 for Oshoma and Ryuden, 8 for Kinbozan unless he's being extra predictable, and 7 or 8 for Koto Shoho. Sada no Umi, C-. He hasn't been at a single digit rank in a year, and despite how I just described the group around him, staying at a 50% win rate for him is going to be a battle. He could also benefit from fighting down in rank if he struggles early, but it's more likely he hangs on to a decent record long enough to never get any super winnable matchups and lands at 6 or 7 wins. Tamawashi, C-. Iron Man pulled himself back from the brink in May with a strong second half, but that came against significantly worse competition. Even though I doubt he'll start as badly as 2 and 7 again, a lot of the same guys are around him, so it may not go much better. 
I think he can hang on in Makauchi for a while longer, getting six or seven wins and not dropping too far, then cracking on some weaker wrestlers coming up from Jurio when he drops far enough, but this looks like one of the losing tournaments. I have a hard time imagining him doing better than eight and seven. Shodai, C-. In two tournaments of these middling ranks, Shodai's gone eight and seven and seven and eight. In theory, he shouldn't be more of a 50-50 choice for Akachi Koshi, but his seven wins last time came with Tomokaze and Surugisho facing him the last two days, and at Maegashira 10, there's a good chance he catches hands from both Asanoyama and Wakataka Kage. He's still big enough and strong enough to pull off a surprise in one of those matches, especially if Asanoyama's knee is messing with his head, but it's a lot harder to see eight wins when it'll be a significant underdog in two of his fights. Midori Fuji, C+. It's quite a drop from viewing him as B tier at Maegashira 5 to C plus at M10, but this is despite the fact he'll also have to face Asanayama and Waka. He's out of range for most of the guys who beat him last time, and even if his days closer to the top of the division are over, that just means he has some time to pull tricks on lower ranked opponents who haven't seen him in a while, or at all. That lack of familiarity helps a lot when you're smaller and need more tactics to win matches. It's possible he'll have a couple Bashos of success and then slide again, but for this one, I think he's one of only a handful of wrestlers in the Asanoyama-Waka orbit who's still likely to reach 8 wins. Ichiyamamoto, Nishikigi, Chorna Umi, Hokuto Fuji, and Takara Fuji. C-, except Hokuto Fuji who's C injury tier. This is another big blob of guys who, despite some stylistic differences, look like they're going to trade wins amongst themselves and with the guys around him but their odds of a winning record are reduced by the fact they're almost certainly facing both Asanoyama and Waka. Hokuto Fuji's still not right with that knee, but he might end up with the best record of any of them. Ichiyamamoto managed to beat Shonen Umi in May, but lose to Tomokaze, so my default expectation of him is seven or eight wins, and that's without the killers in their midst. Nishikigi should be able to succeed at this level, but after a five and 10 at Maegashira seven, it's hard to envision him beating anyone who isn't willing to run directly at him. Those guys do exist, but there shouldn't be enough for 8 wins. Shuren Umi is a 7-8 win machine, but like Ichi, he'll probably get dumpstered by Asanoyama and Waka, and that makes his Kachikoshi odds that much longer. And despite Takara Fuji's incredibly impressive start in May, 5 of his 9 wins were against guys no longer in the division. He's inching towards D tier, and I'm expecting 6 wins, but I can't bring myself to completely discount his chances of reaching 8. There's one caveat to all this. It assumes Asanoyama is mostly himself. If he's clearly struggling with his knee or any other injury, this could change. So if you have less faith in Asanoyama's health than I do, you might view some of these guys differently. If you absolutely have to pick someone in fantasy from this group, go with Hokuto Fuji if you're willing to accept the risk of his knee still holding him back, Ichi Yamamoto if you're not, or Churina Umi if you just want 7 wins. Asanoyama, A, Injury Tier the only reason he's not S is Wakataka Kage. Even 70% of Asanayama should run through this part of the division. If his knee stays healthy and he can maintain the faith his knee will stay healthy rather than work around it too much, he should be in the Yusho race. Wakataka Kage, S tier. If the repaired ACL is given him problems, you wouldn't know it from how he did in May. It doesn't matter that it was in Jurio, he clapped up on everyone except Kagiyaki, and that was part of Kagiyaki's best tournament at any level since 2015. It'll probably break down before a fully healthy knee, but that's a longer term issue. For now, he should throw just about everyone around him on their face, contend for the U show, and give us a chance to see where he's at against the top guys. Endo, C, injury tier. I originally had Endo at C minus, then C plus. After all, someone's gotta get a couple more wins than everyone else, and looking at the guys in this part of the Banzuke, Endo seems like the most likely candidate. My doubts were based on how disastrous he looked during his last three Makauchi Bashos and the fact he looked like his knees barely functioned. In May though, there was very little sign of those issues both in how he fought and how he seemed to feel after matches. That's why I originally didn't place him in the injury tier. He looked healthy in May, and if he can hold together, even with Waka sitting next to him and Asanayama nearby, he should have enough other wins available to get to 8. But I'm putting him in injury tier because, despite how well he did in May, I'm still automatically saying if he holds together. If you're willing to take a chance on his health, I think he absolutely has the most upside of anyone in the bottom six. But if things start to go south in his record tanks, he's going to be the lower ranked guy all the other wrestlers are looking to for free wins. So even though I like his upside, his downside is way, way down. Chiyo Shoma, D tier. Chiyo is like the flip side of Endo. He wins with a lot of tactics and grit, and when he fell out of the top division, it looked like that was it for his Makauchi career. 
His first three tournaments in Jurio gave no reason to think differently. Where that 12-3 in May came from, I have absolutely no idea. He's probably less swingy than Endo in terms of upside versus downside, but he was 3-12 in his last Maegashira Basho, and the three guys who beat him in May also were promoted. It looks like this is going to be a rough ride for the Henka Master. Roga, C-. All Roga does is win, slightly less than he loses, and the competition around him just got tougher. Pulling off another 7 and 8 will genuinely be an accomplishment, but for tier list purposes, that means he lands directly at C-. Kagiaki, C-, and like Taka no Sho, this is a low C-. Endo and Bushozan beat Kagiaki in May and came up with him, and I do not expect him to beat Waka again. On the flip side, his other losses were to Asakoryu and Tohakuryu, and the only troublesome little dude he's even semi-likely to face is Midori Fuji. He hasn't had a winning record in Makauchi since 2022, and the one before that was in 2020, but he's also so annoyingly unpredictable that I'm not quite confident enough in him sucking ass to put him in D tier. Bushozan. Now he is D tier. Yeah, we could easily end up with 5 losing records at the bottom, but Bushozan seems most destined for it. For one, never mind how long it's been since this or that guy had a winning record in Makauchi, who shows on's been here three times and never even reached six wins. He's lost double digit matches every time. If I didn't have F tier set aside for known Kyujo wrestlers, I'd put him there. And finally, Nishiki Fuji, another low C minus. Nishiki Fuji's tougher because he did pretty well for a while, but at this point he looks like someone who's going to ride the yo-yo between divisions. And I was surprised I came to that conclusion because he just had a winning record in March with a reasonably strong performance. But his 5-10 in May was so disastrous that I don't think much hope is warranted. You know how Takara Fuji had 5 of his 9 wins against guys who left the division? Nishiki Fuji had 3 of his 5 wins against that same group, and it was the worst 3. Mitoru, Tomokaze, and Surugisho. He lost to Toki Hayate, he lost to Roga. He did so badly that he was one of the guys who got tougher competition because everyone struggling further up needed someone to fight. The only thing keeping him out of D tier is that it's possible Endo, Chiyoshoma, and Kagiyaki all turn back into pumpkins and he manages to avoid a fight with Asanoyama. Then maybe, maybe he can get those 8 wins, but I don't like his chances. Realistically, despite the different grades, I cannot recommend anyone below Endo as a pick unless you're really, really stretching. And that's the tier list for Nagoya 2024. A lot of C-minus picks in here, I know, but we're looking at a Basha where the guys at the top and the two monsters at the bottom should soak up a lot of wins. I'm sure a couple of those C-minus picks will rise above expectations, but on average we should see more guys than usual fall just short of a winning record because they ended up in the path of one buzzsaw or another. So, best of luck with your games and get hyped for the Basha. I'll see you soon.